guys and welcome back to another video with Travel to Yuzu. I'm Megan. Today we are going to continue a day in the life series. You know, with the holidays and everything, I know we've all been a little bit busy, so I hope you've had a uh, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, and a Happy New Year. And with that, we are going to get into today's video. Today we are going to go over my rat colonies, as you can see in the background. Now, I do breed rats here at the zoo, and I do that for a couple of reasons. One, it's to feed the snakes, because when you have multiple snakes, it does get expensive. Breeding your own rats, uh, it kind of evens itself out in the end. So, I have some rats here that are... Hi, Zeus. <laughs> I have some rats here that are breeders, and then, as mentioned, some that I do uh, feed off to my snakes. Oh. So, we're going to meet the rats today. We're going to go over the housing for them, and the process that I do with these rats uh, on a weekly and daily basis. So this is the first batch of rats that we're going to talk about. These are my two rats. Uh, trying to see who is who here. This is Ron, and this is Harry, and then this is the girl, Hermione. There usually is another female in here, but she's actually currently with babies, so I do separate my females when they're having babies. I gotta get them some water here. I'm just, I'm actually doing all of the rat work right now. So I figured it's a great time to film the, film the process of what I'm doing. So I am in the process right now of getting everybody water. Uh, I cleaned this cage yesterday. I cleaned a few cages up here yesterday, and then I'm going to do the rest of the cages downstairs, which is where the majority of the rats live. So this cage is great. This is a two-story, I guess two, two and a double half-story cage. Sorry for the focus not really working there. Uh, it's plenty of room for them. I do have a wheel down here as well, although I don't think they really use it. These guys are, just don't seem to use the wheel a whole lot. A couple different hammocks and sleep areas. They love to pile in. Here, let me open it up. They love to pile in this thing back here. That's like their favorite area to sleep. They're super, super friendly. All of the rats here at the zoo are very, very, very friendly. Even though they are feeders, these guys, like I said, are breeders. They're pets. They're not feeders. Even though they are, all the colonies here are treated well. They're always giving me kisses, you can see here, this is Ron back here licking my hand and being all sweet. Harry's always trying to come out. These guys are very, very, very nice. And up here we have little Hermione. So this cage is actually awesome. When I bought this cage, it came with just these two levels, a couple ramps. I have another level for this cage and another, like, a few more ramps. But I happen to have this old dog kennel bottom. It's, like, just the bottom of the dog kennel that when I bought other cages, it came with it. And it honestly, it fit perfect. Look, I didn't, it didn't, it fit perfect inside the cage. I couldn't believe it. It was meant to be. So I just drilled some holes along the edge, zip tied in a few spots. I also put a piece of wood across here just for an extra support. It's got a little bit of an edge, very tiny edge, so I can put some shavings in it to kind of keep it in. But I think I do want to create something like a little barrier to keep more of it in because it does fall over the place. My dogs are playing. These two are always playing. Minnie and Stuart. Stuart is a girl despite the name. They have a little cage in here and ironically they do have a snake hide as their house but these guys are pets not feeders. These guys are actually both girls and have yet to be bred as they're still a little bit young. Very friendly rats. Minnie is actually a Dumbo. Uh, a couple of the rats that I bred ended up uh, having some Dumbo in them so we got Minnie. Let's see if she'll come out here. There she is. Minnie. A little Dumbo girl. There's her ears. We got her as a result of a few of my breeding pair. So she's very, very, very friendly. As I said, all the rats here are very friendly. You can pick them right up. They really like to be held and handled. They're super, super sweet girls. This cage is a little small for them, so I do actually plan to add some extra levels. Rats love to climb, so any kind of uh, cage where you can utilize the vertical space, you definitely want to do that. So I have a little platform right here. But I all right, guys, and this is the... Uh, rats that are in the lower part of my house. There. This is a double cage right here. There's some on the bottom and there's some right here There's also a cage up here with some and then over here. There's also some more <clears throat> These are 15 gallon aquariums and these are what I put them in when the mothers are either expecting or they're already taking care of babies currently on babies and Up here. This is a 30 gallon. So those are 15 and that's a 30 gallon and these have a male and a female one one parent here That's it and uh, I do have to add a few more things to these cages because these are pretty plain. I am picking up some more wheels here soon. Um, as I said, these are super annoying, so I want to put water bottles in here. Although, what's the 
obvious problem. It's glass, so I can't put it through the aquarium. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get these. They have a flat front and a curved back, but this is adjustable, so I can make it the other way around. She's having a little drink here. She's having a little drink. I can make it so this flat part sits against the glass and this part points out. And to do that, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna attach Velcro. So a piece of Velcro right there, and then a piece of Velcro on the inside of the glass, and I'll be able to just literally Velcro the water to it. It'll be so much easier and so much more time saving than having to do water dishes once or twice a day. Oh, you see mom's up for a drink. See the baby's moving around in there. Oh, you can see one's poking, poking its head out, moving around in there. So this top level right here currently has two rats. It does have one male who is currently eating right now. Again, none of them bite. They're all pretty friendly. A few of them are like, they just tolerate people. They'd rather be left alone. This uh, cage is an example of that. The female is back there. Usually there's a male and two females, but as said, the female that's usually in this cage is actually with baby, so that's why she's separated. If I don't separate them, um, one, the male will rebreed them immediately, and sometimes they will eat the babies. So I like to give my females some privacy with their babies and also ensure the females getting lots of food and not getting rebred immediately. I'm not a big fan of them being rebred immediately. I'd rather give them at least five to six weeks to kind of recover. And then the lower cage down here does also house a male and one female. There is usually a second female, but again, she's expecting right now. I gotta clean up here. This is actually kind of annoying to clean because it's, it's really awkward to reach to because there's only one door. So I think I'm gonna actually move this. So they've kind of ripped up a curtain and they've made a little area up there. Again, super friendly. I did do both of these cages yesterday in terms of cleaning. This one does have a wheel. Uh, the female up here really likes this wheel. I see her using it all the time. So that's why that one has a wheel. I did used to have a wheel inside this one, but none of them used it, so I just took it away. They've got hammocks and lots of things like that. They love hammocks and climbing and all that stuff. But yeah, I don't feed my rats treats through the cage, so they're not... They're not like, as you can see, they're not going to bite me as soon as I put fingers in the cage. I definitely say that's a no-no, don't feed your rats or anything, any animal really, <clears throat> through the bars of the cage because they will learn to bite if you do that. This has two separate doors, so it's the perfect cage to turn into a two-story uh, cage to be able to separate it. And what I did is it came with levels like this, and two of these levels side by side actually fit perfect enough to separate the cage. As you can see, there's two levels side by side and it's perfect. The only thing is that these levels have a hole in it. They each have a hole like that. What I did is I actually had a, t a tin of those quality in treats. Quality street treats. Hey buddy, he's curious with the phone. Hi. Anyway, so I have this here and I have the cover over here. And what I did is they fit perfect. They covered those holes perfectly. Just put a few little tiny screws into it and boom. It covered it up so now these two colonies they're called rat colonies are separated i do keep my colonies separated because if i don't uh males will fight unless you bond males as babies or yeah basically as babies males will fight so if i were to just put this male in with this male up here for example they would fight more than likely and possibly to the death so we definitely want to avoid that up here is another cage with a male right here and a female. This male is very friendly. He's a little shy, but once you actually pet him, he's quite friendly. The female is, I think, up here sleeping. There she is. This one is really, really friendly. This one I actually raised from uh, she was born here. Growing out a couple of the ones upstairs you saw earlier. And this one's so this one's very, very, very sweet because it's, I've had it since it was a baby. So I spend time with my rats. I give them good, good cages and enclosures. I make sure they're happy. I find that really important. So this is their cage here, lots of hammocks, they love hanging out up here, that's probably their favorite. Um, I did, again, I trial and error with wheels. I did have a wheel on this, they never used it, so I took it out. So when I divided this one, it doesn't have an edge or anything. So the shavings, they get thrown everywhere, it's really annoying. This cage has a lower bottom, so most of the shavings are kept in. So what I did is I started lining this cage up here so that the shavings stop flying everywhere. So, so far today, I've done back of both of these cages like this. So yeah, we're going to do this side as well uh, for the water bottle. All I'll do is I'll poke a hole in the plastic so that the, this drinking part can go through it and still into the cage. This cage is actually what I want to do eventually. Corrugated plastic that you get and they put a drill the hole in it, they put a bolt through, and then they just twist it on right there. So it's actually movable. 
And then over here, I do have another spare 15-gallon uh, aquarium that is used for mom's babies. So yeah, as mentioned in today's video, we are going to finish lining this cage right here. I'm going to clean out that other 15-gallon aquarium for these guys, and then we're going to call it at that. I find the bigger sheet of this, and I didn't realize when I did this one that the bigger sheet actually fits perfectly across like that in one piece. So I'm definitely going to undo this and just put one piece across so it's cleaner looking. And then I'll do the same thing for this piece over here. I'm going to do this side right now. and then Alright, so I went ahead and took this ugly piece off and put a fresh piece that does fit perfectly. I mean, there's a tiny little like inch space here, but that's not really that concerning. It looks a lot better, obviously. Now the rats are probably going to chew this because it is like plastic, but it's okay. I don't know how long it'll last, but it's definitely good enough for now. Same thing on the other side, and I poked holes for this to fit through so that I can still take it on and off. Like, I like to switch this between rats so they all get kind of different turns with the puzzle. And since there is a little gap there, I didn't even have to poke a hole for the water water bottle. I just stuck the lip of it through that. I have this spare piece. Uh, I actually think, I haven't sized it out yet, but I'm going to check. I think I'll be able to take this piece off right here, this little piece. And remember how I said I want to cover up right here and right here as best I can uh, and just have the door open. So I'm going to see if I can fit those small pieces to here and have one going up there and then one going up here and then this will be done. Alright, so that piece that I had cut there actually fit perfect so I attached that. I did put some tape over the sides because it's metal there so it's sharp. I just used uh, twist sides, that's all I have right now, but once I have some zip ties I'll probably redo it and make it look a lot better because this is just kind of ugly. But once I put it in place and kind of tuck everything in it will look fine. So yeah, I can still open the door. It's perfect. doesn't affect the door at all. I'm going to do the exact same thing on the other side right here. All right, there we go. I went and attached the last piece, and it's set. I'm hoping this will keep some of the shavings in a little better. Just leave it, and whatever shavings come through here, whatever. No big deal. I do want to invest in a shop vac to make cleaning these easier, because right now I actually just put gloves on and grab handfuls and throw it out. And then I use a uh, cleaner and some paper towel and clean it out, but... It's annoying. I'd like to get a shop back, like a wet dry shop back, and I can just suck it all up. Be so much quicker, so much easier. Save me a lot of time. And yeah, the bottom level is pretty easy to clean because this tray actually comes out, so I just pull the tray out and dump it. The cage back in place, and this is going to be so much better. It looks pretty good, honestly. I find it it looks fine. It's like lined up here. I'm, like I said, I can't cut a straight line, so there's that. Uh, all that really sticks out are the twist ties and whatever functionality overlooks. So what are these by the way? These, these are just panels that you can connect with little pieces to make like a pen to put on the ground to put like guinea pigs in and rabbits and stuff. So I've used them for things like this. They work great. I've used them to make little like buckets to hold hay and things like that. The shavings. So this shaving in here is actually aspen uh, or poplar tree shavings. It's a hardwood shaving. You cannot use pine for rats as it is toxic. The odor and the dust that comes off of pine uh, is really bad for the respiratory system. Alright, well nice surprise. While I was uh, filming the video there, my friend came by and dropped off a few things that I needed and she also brought some new rats along. She was looking to kind of downsize a few different rats so she knew I had them and decided to bring me one. This one here is very sweet. She's an older girl that probably shouldn't be bred anymore so I actually put her in with my younger girls that aren't being bred. She's really, really sweet and her colors are super pretty and they're all getting along great immediately. I am going to get a bigger hide because she's too big for that hide is the only thing. So brought along some more females that are of breeding age. Uh, this little girl right here and then this little girl right here. So I did add these ones in with the older boys and this one female up here. And she also gave me a few males along with it. So this was actually one of the males she gave me. This guy is so pretty. I think she said he's Velveteen or something like that, Velveteen Dumbo. Really pretty, so I added him in with two girls. The girl that she gave me is this little one right here, the one that's kind of the different color back there, the gray and white, so I went ahead and put her in here as well. Rats get adjusted pretty quick to each other, so I haven't had any issues with fighting. They're going to bicker a little bit, but no blood, and that's really just what you look for. If they don't draw blood, they're probably fine. And then one of the other females I got, I did put inside this cage with one male and one other female. This one right here that's a little bit unique looking, that one. And lastly, she brought me a couple older males. Now, I didn't know she was bringing these ones, so I just had to grab a cage last minute for them. I just happened to have this down in the basement. The bar spacing on this is really big, so it doesn't work for young rats, but these 
two boys are quite big. This one's really friendly. Again, they're older. These guys are both around two, so they're definitely older. I don't plan to breed them. They are bonded male, so I am able to keep them together. So I put them in this cage. This cage is completely empty. That will change. As soon as I have more wheels and more stuff, I will fix it up and give them lots more room. All right, guys, well, that's going to do it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed uh, this part of the series about all about my rats. If you did, make sure you hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel, and drop a comment below. And I'll see you in the next video.